as we conduct a statistical study, it's very important we have a random sample to work with. So this video is going to take a look at identifying different types of random samples and the danger of a potential bias and how it can influence our results. First, with random sampling, there are several different methods you can use to get a good random sample of your population. The first is called simple random sampling. This is the old draw a number out of a hat method, but it's a little more sophisticated now that we have computers. You assign each participant a number and then use a random number generator or a random number table to select which participants will actually participate in your study. In this way, everyone is equally likely to be chosen. Another random sampling type is called stratified random sampling, where you divide your population into groups and then take a random sample from each group. A great example of this happens every election season. When the news is doing some type of poll, they divide the population into Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. And then they poll a bunch of Democrats, they poll a bunch of Republicans, and they poll a bunch of Independents, and that way each group is proportionally represented in the results to make the results as accurate as possible. Another type of random sampling is systematic random sampling. This is where you start from a random point in your population and then take every kth member of the population. What that means is, for example, if we were doing a survey of Liberty students, we might pick one random Liberty student that walks into the library and then we'll take every tenth student after that. So ten students walk in, that person's included. And then 10 students walk in, that person's included. So every kth member of the population gets included in our sample. The next type of random sampling is called cluster random sampling. Similar to stratified, we divide into groups, but the difference here is instead of taking a random sample from each group, that would be stratified, we take all the members of random groups. The great example of this is in a football stadium. Maybe they want to do a survey of all of the football fans. Well, instead of randomly sampling the entire football stadium of fans, that would take forever, they decide to randomly select sections H, K, and Q. So they go to those three sections and they interview everybody in that section. That's cluster sampling, where you divide into groups and take every member of the randomly selected groups. The final method of sampling that's used way too often is called convenience sampling. In convenience sampling, we use the population members that are readily available to us, the ones that are close, convenient, easy. However, the problem with this is you get some type of potential bias. It's not truly random and may not represent the entire population. For example, if I stood outside of a McDonald's and asked people what was their favorite restaurant to visit, we get a bias towards McDonald's. If I stood outside of a fitness center and asked people their opinion about exercise, I'm going to get a bias that does not reflect the entire population. So convenience sampling is generally frowned upon, but it is used probably too often in different studies. So I want to give another example of each of these different types of random samplings. Let's say I was a doctor who was going to do some type of study with type 1 diabetes patients, and I need to collect a random sample of type 1 diabetes patients. There's lots of different ways I could collect my data. The first, I could do a simple random sampling. I could assign each patient in the United States that has type 1 diabetes a number, and then randomly select 1,000 of those numbers to be my 1,000 participants. Simple random sampling. If I wanted to do a stratified random sampling, for example, if I wanted every state to be represented in my study, I might divide the country into 50 states and select 200 patients from each of the 50 states, probably using simple random sampling to decide who's included from each state. But I make sure I have 200 from each of the 50 states. Stratified sampling. Systematic sampling would be if I pick one random patient to start with. So let's say I randomly pick the 1,528th patient in my list. And then I'm going to go 300 patients down the list and include that one. Then 300 patients down the list and include that one. And every 300th patient gets included in my study of type 1 diabetes. 
That's systematic. Cluster random sampling means I'm going to take certain groups. So let's say I take an, all the endocrinologists in the nation, those are the people that are doctors for diabetes, uh, and I randomly select 40 of those doctors and then use all of the patients that belong to those 40 doctors. That would be cluster random sampling. Finally, convenience sampling would be if I live in a certain town and there's an endocrinologist office in town, I just go to that local office and use the patients in that town. There's a potential bias with this method, however. Maybe I live in a very small rural town. Then I'm only going to get patients that uh, are exposed to certain environmental elements that might influence their uh, care. Maybe I'm only exposed to patients in, I'm in a very hot, dry climate. So these patients are um, in a hotter climate that can influence uh, blood sugar levels. And so it's not really random. I have all types of bias that can intervene with a convenience method. And so that's why we generally try and use one of the other random sampling methods whenever possible. Now, as you're working with selecting a random sample, one nice way to get a random sample is we can use Excel, which is on most people's computers. Excel has this nice uh, equation. It's called rand between. And then in parentheses, you put the low and high number, and it'll give you a random number between that low and high number. Let's take a look at how that works on Excel. So I'm in Excel, and in cell A1 here, if I hit equals, so it knows I'm dealing with an equation, and if I type in rand between and open a parentheses, it wants my bottom number and top number. Let's say I've got 1,000 in my population. So I want a random number between 1, comma, and 1,000. Close the parentheses, and when I hit enter, Excel is going to give me a random number between 1 and 1,000. Let's say I want 10 people in my study. If I select this cell, there's a little dot in the bottom corner. If I click that dot and drag down to the number 10, it's actually going to give me 10 random numbers. And very quickly, I've got the individuals that are going to be included in my study. The 18th, the 600th, the 197th, all the way down. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you in understanding how we can find a random sample to be included in our study as we identify the different random samples and the dangers of potential bias. Good luck to you as you continue your work in our course.